All right. Well, it's spot on 11 o'clock here on the West Coast. So let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. My name is Angela Andrew, and I'm product evangelist for Mylio Photos. And one of my uh, core responsibilities is helping make you guys successful with the software. So today's topic, I want to jump into the working on an iPad or an iPhone, Android device, doesn't matter which mobile device you're using, but we're going to do some editing, which is one of my favorite topics. I love making photos look awesome. I use a variety of different applications, both on my mobile devices and on my computer. So if you have questions about those, please let me know in our community. It's a great place to ask those types of questions. But today we're going to focus on the mobile editing experience. We're going to take a look at editing a little bit inside Malia Photos app. And then we're also going to work with a couple of external editors and get a little bit creative. So I want to show you how that process goes to get your pictures from Mylio Photos to an external editor and back so you can really enjoy that. Let me start by sharing my screen. There we go. And right now you're just going to see my desktop because what I want to do is bring up my iPad for you guys to see what I'm doing on this device. So give me just a second to get that connected. All right. And there we go. And hopefully you guys can see my pointer as well on the screen of the iPad. I've got a little mouse attached. So hopefully that makes that easier for you guys to see. And then I'm also going to come over here with my mouse and make this window a bit bigger. Hopefully that makes it easy for you guys to, to see what's going on here. All right. So now that we're all set up, you guys are looking at the um, albums view of my iPad. And these are a few images that I captured this last summer on vacation that's up near Mammoth in California in the Eastern Sierra. And we're gonna do a little bit of editing on some of these photos. So we're gonna start with some quick and easy edits just here in Malia Photos. And let me go ahead and start with this image from Bodie. It's an old historic state park, ghost town, really, really cool place. So over here in the side panel, right now I have this open. If you're not seeing this, it might be because it's closed. You can just click that double arrow to open it and then click on edit. And this is gonna bring up the edit panel, which is very similar to what we have in the desktop version of the software. And I'm gonna go down and just take a look and see what my options are as far as editing here in the software. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can just click and drag, touch and drag. I'm gonna click auto color and that's just gonna do a quick little auto adjustment to the colors of the image. And then I can go ahead and just scroll up, give myself a little bit more screen real estate and close the histogram. Sorry, this mouse is really, really touchy. <laughs> And I'm still getting used to using it as a pointer with my iPad. So give me a second here. And I'm going to pull the exposure down. We're just going to darken that a little bit. It's a bit bright. And I do like the added contrast. And you'll see that that's making the image look a little bit less flat. If we move it to the left, you start to lose some definition. And if we move it to the right, that makes those darks a little bit darker and the brights a little bit brighter and just a little bit more pleasant to look at. I'm also going to move the highlights a little bit down to the left. And we can open up our shadows a tiny bit. There we go. Whites, I'm going to make a little bit brighter. Blacks a little bit darker. And clarity adds some mid-tone contrast. So that just adds a bit of extra definition. And already this image is looking a lot better. So we can take a look here at the before and the after. And already that's much, much better. But we can keep going down here and do a few more adjustments. And I like to come down to the vignette tool. And this lets me really zero in on whatever the subject is in an image. And for me, it's going to be this outhouse right here. So I have a very particular vignetting technique. And you'll see me do this in a variety of different applications. But what I like to do, first off, is take that amount all the way down to negative 100. Then I pull the size down. And what I'm doing is kind of gauging the size off of my subject. I can then adjust the roundness, and you can see that's giving me more of an oval, more of a square. So I'm going to go a little bit more oval here, and then I'm going to scroll down here down to choose subject. And this lets me place where this oval is, so I can really zero in on my subject matter. So that looks pretty good. From here, I'm going to go back up to feather, and this makes the transition nice and smooth between the light and dark area. You can adjust the rotation if you want, so this just rotates that circle a bit. I'm gonna leave that alone. 
And now that I have this placed, now I can go back up to that amount slider and back this off to a point that it looks natural. Mm -hmm. And for most images, between 30 and 50 is where you're going to have that sweet spot. If you start going over 50, you're going to see that that dark circle becomes very pronounced. And in most cases, that's not a good thing. You don't want somebody to look at your image and go, wow, nice vignette. Um, you want them to look at the picture and feel an emotion from the image, not from your processing. So I'm going to back that off to probably about 40. And I think that's a great spot for this image. It just very subtly draws your eye into the outhouse. And I think this image overall looks much, much better than what I started with. So here's the before. And there's the after. And that's just in Milio Photos. Now, what I'm working on here is the smart preview. I haven't downloaded the original, but I have all of the raw data because Milio Photos in that smart preview gives me that data to work with within the application. Now, if I want to work with the raw data outside of the application, we have to take a few different steps. So let me go ahead and hit the back button here. And I'm going to go back to this view, and we're going to go to one of my favorite um, external editing apps on the iPad, which is called Snapseed. So Snapseed is a free app. I believe it's made by Google, and it's available for iOS, iPad OS, and Android. So everybody should be able to go get it and get it for free. And it edits your JPEGs. It edits all different formats. It edits your raw photos. And it's really a pretty cool tool. So let's go ahead and choose an image here that we want to edit using Snapseed. Now, if I click over to the Info tab, you'll see right now I have the preview. And on any image, if you're wondering what quality you're looking at, you can go to the Info tab and look here at the top, and it says Preview. Now, what I want to do is I want to work on the original of this. There's a couple of different ways we can do that. One is to go down to the Actions menu and say Download Originals, which let's go ahead and do that here really quick. And that's going to pull in the original. Now you see that says Original Raw. The other thing that we'll need to do is go up to our settings and there into the more menu here in the upper right and down to settings. And we're going to look at our export and sharing settings. Now, what this determines is when you use any of the share aspects inside of Milia Photos, this is the quality of the image it's going to share. And that also dictates what you share to an external editor. So in this case, I want to send the raw and I'm going to go over here to JPEG and I'm going to click on Unmodified Original. And give me just a second. I can hear somebody's music coming through. Let me see if I can get that muted. One moment. All right. It sounds like it went away. Thank you so much for muting your, muting your mic. All right. So we have Unmodified Original selected. That means when I open this in another application, an editor, Facebook, whatever, it's going to send the original raw file. So now that I have that set, I can click and close this window and then go to the share button. And what this does is this opens what we call the share sheet. And that's an industry term that you're gonna see in a lot of software. And what that means is it's just pulling up this sharing um, dialogue that you'll notice is very, say, very similar for a lot of different applications. And what I wanna do is go down to open in, and that's gonna change this a little bit. And then I can go ahead and just move over in the side here and scroll this over. And you'll see some of the options that I have available. Now, I don't see Snapseed in this list, so I'm going to click more. And then all I have to do is scroll down and go down to Snapseed. And once I click that, it's going to launch Snapseed on my iPad. And now I can do my editing here. So when you first get into the application, you have some, a few options here. Defaults to presets. And these are just some different filters that you can apply. You can also click on this pencil and this opens up individual tools. And there's a lot of different things you can do here. So I'm gonna start with a preset and let's try Faded Glory. That's pretty good, I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the check mark to accept that. And then let's go into our tools. I wanna add a bit of drama. Ooh, that's a bit too much. So then I can go down here to the adjust. And the way this works is if you scroll up and down on the screen, you can change the tools that are inside the different the, um, the main tool that you selected. So the filter strength here is a bit strong. And then I can slide my finger right and left on the screen to increase or decrease that effect. So I'm gonna pull that down pretty low. And then I'm gonna go to the saturation 
And I'm actually going to pull that up. There we go. I think that's pretty good. And then I can hit that check mark. And then let's say we want to add some tonal contrast. That's one of my favorites as well. And that is right there next to drama. And you'll see that just gives it a little bit more depth and dimension. Again, you can use your finger to go up and down to get those different tools within this. And I'm going to go ahead and just play with these a little bit. And again, that mouse is a little bit sensitive. So I'm just going to use my finger here on the screen to do this. So I'm, I apologize you're not able to see the pointer as I'm doing this, but you can see at the top of the screen, I'm moving my finger from right to left. And to pull up that menu, I'm moving my finger up and down on the screen. So there we go. And I'm just making a few little subtle changes here to the way this is presenting. And I like to just move my finger back and forth and it shows in real time what it's doing. The change is very subtle. There we go. And then I can go down here, accept that change. And let's do one more thing. I really like where this is, but it feels a bit dark. So I'm gonna go into my tools one more time, up here to the tune image. And if I go into these adjust tools, here's the brightness. And I can just overall brighten this up a little bit. There we go. I like that. Maybe not quite so far, but then go down to my shadows. And that's just going to brighten up the darkest areas of the image. Right about there. I think that's great. From there, we can go down to accept that right there. And maybe one final thing. Again, I like to add vignettes. Sorry, my... Like I said, my mouse is very sensitive. <laughs> All right, we're going to go back to the tools. And let's see here. Where is the vignette? There it is. And again, you can place the center. We can grab that dot and just drag it wherever we want it. And I think that looks great. So I'm going to hit that check mark. And now that we've edited this picture, the next step is to get it back into my Leo photos. So what I'm going to do is click the share button and choose share. It's gonna apply all those changes to the image. And now I can scroll over. There's my Leo photos, my list. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that. And that's gonna copy my edited image back to my Leo. So now from there, I can switch back to my Leo photos and I can go into my folders and I'm in the inbox, which is where it's gonna pop it. And there's my edited image right back in my Leo photos. And I can easily, if I want to, move this to the album where I've been working and I can go down to the actions menu and choose add to album right there. And I'm gonna click back here in my list to mobile editing demo, continue. And now if I go back to my albums, click on that here, mobile editing demo, you'll see here's my original and then there's my edit. So it's that easy to move back and forth between different applications in my Leo photos. Let me take a quick look here at the chat and see if there's anything going on over here. If you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to unmute and ask your questions or go ahead and pop them into the chat. I will keep an eye on that. But that's how I edit with Snapseed. So let's go through and do one more. I'm gonna go again back here. Let's go back to the main screen here. And let's choose uh, this one here. I feel like this one needs a little bit of love. Again, we're looking at the preview version. Oh, we yeah, if I was open to listening to a listening to a, what's that? Oh, right. Right yeah, throw them away. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Get that out of the way. Having to jump back and forth between two mice, one that controls my computer, one that's on the iPad. All right, so there we go. So again, we're looking at the preview here. We want to get the original so we can go down to the actions menu and say download originals. And that's going to bring in the original quality image. And then we can verify up here in the more menu. And you only have to do this once, but it's something if I go away and come back, I want to make sure my settings are correct because there's times that I've sent the wrong quality. So I'm going to go to settings, export and sharing, make sure file type unmodified original is selected. And I can go ahead and close that and then go to the share menu and go down to open in. And let's see here, let's go ahead and scroll over. I'm gonna to go to the more menu again. 
scroll down and this time I want to choose let's see here Photoshop Express this is another fun application so if you have a um, Adobe subscription you'll have access to Photoshop Express you can also download it free and use it the tools are just very limited so if you're going to download and use this I would um, encourage you to do this with an Adobe subscription not without but I'm going to go ahead and click import and that's going to bring that into my Adobe Photoshop Express and it's going to open it up and I have a variety of other tools here similar to what I had in Snapseed just a different way of looking at it and again I can choose from a variety of different looks these are like presets or I can go down into my editing tools and choose specific tools so I'm going to go into color first of all and I feel like this image is a little bit warm or a little bit cool and it needs to be warmed up a little bit meaning it's on the blue side there's kind of a blue overcast to this and I want to warm it up just a little bit. So I'm going to grab temperature and just slightly move this over to the right. And you'll see it's making those greens and those various colors look a little bit more alive, a little bit more natural. There we go. I like that. And now let's go over to our highlights. This image, the bright areas are a little bit bright. The rest of the image looks pretty good, but the bright areas are a little too bright. So the highlights is going to target those brightest areas. And I can bring that down. You'll see how that's starting to bring in some, inf some information that was lost up here in the sky. There's actually some great texture up there. So I really like that. Shadows look, look pretty good. All right, the rest of this looks good. Texture I like because this adds some of that extra detail, brings out some of the details. So I'm gonna bring that up just a hair. Clarity gives us that mid-tone contrast. Bring that up a bit. And I especially am liking what that's doing up in the sky. And then dehaze, you can see there's a bit of haze here out towards the horizon. Dehaze is going to cut through some of that, add a little bit of extra contrast. All right, that's looking pretty good. And then we can see where we've gone so far by going, here's the before, and here's the after. That's a much better image. Now we can go ahead and add a vignette to this as well. So let's go over here to our vignette tool. And I can just darken those edges down a little bit. This particular tool is different in that the numbering on this, you can see I'm only at like number negative 14. That's really as far as I want to go. Um, a lot of them are on a scale of 100. So you start out at 50 and you can go to negative 100 or actually start at zero. You can go to negative 100 or positive 100. And it gives you this really wide scale. With Adobe products, it's a little bit more sensitive. 14 to 16 is usually as heavy as I want to go on the negative side to add a vignette. For me, that's just kind of my sweet spot to make sure it looks natural. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm not going to do much else here. Again, we can take a look here at our before and our after. And let's go ahead and call that good. Now I'm going to again hit the share button. And then I want to go down to the bottom. And let's see here. Because if I hit save, I hit this right here, what it's going to do is save to my camera roll. And instead of saving it to my camera roll, I want to send this to Milio. So I go down to the bottom and I click more. And again, it's going to bring up that share sheet. So now all I have to do is click over and choose Milio. And it's going to copy that to Milio. I can then switch back to the Milio Photos application. And it's going to open up that inbox folder one more time. And it's going to bring it in right there. And again, if we want to get that back into the album where we were working, we can go down to the actions menu and choose add to album. Our mobile editing demo album is already selected, so I can choose continue. And that's going to add it to the album where we've been working. I'm going to click back button once here. And you can see here's our before and here's our after. So that in a nutshell is how I edit on my iPad. Now, the cool thing is if I go ahead and I pull up the Milio Photos application here on my computer. Let me go ahead and just put this to the side here for a second. And make that tinier. And if we jump over here to that same album in Milio Photos on my computer, you can see all of these edits are already here as well. So that first one we edited, there's the truck before and the truck after. There's the after of our edit of the lakes. 
So all of these things have already made their way into my Leo photos on my computer as well. So while I'm editing on my, on my, on my tablet, all of those things are getting synced and backed up and everything is available no matter what device I'm looking at. So with that, I want to open the floor up to any questions and see if everybody is clear on how to do the editing from your tablet. And if you have any questions on how to make your pictures look their best. It's a very, very quiet group today. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed this segment. Was there a question? And, and Angela? Yes. Yeah, what, what's the best for getting out red eye? For red eye, so there is a red eye tool inside of Milio. I find so, that it's difficult to control in Milio. Like I've I've not had great success with the one in Milio. Okay. Um, well, I believe there is also one inside of Snapseed. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let me see if I can find an image real quick that has. Let me get some windows out of the way here. One second. Is that over there? So let me go over here to people and let me think here if I have an image that has red eye. Not really so much here, but let's see. Do, 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 do. I know I have some in here, it's just a matter of finding one. Well, at any rate, let's go ahead and go on the ones here of my uncle. And we'll choose one of these are all scanned, old scan photos. So let me grab this one and I'm gonna send this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna download the original. So that's gonna take a second. And so that's one thing, you don't have to necessarily go down to the actions menu, download the original and then send it. You can also just click share. And if you have unmodified original selected, it's going to give you the option to download it at that point. So that's something cool to note. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go to open in and we're going to go down to more and Snapseed and go ahead to open. Great. And then if I go over here to tools, uh, let's see here. It does have a portrait section. And I believe in here has eye clarity, face light, not there. Could have sworn this one had a red eye removal. I might be looking right at it, but I'm not seeing it. So possibly not this application. Let's try um, Photoshop, Photoshop Express. So again, we're gonna go to open in, over to more, Photoshop Express and choose import. And I need to close out this other one that I was in. There we go. And possibly under healing adjustments. You know, as far as doing it on, oh, there we go. Eyes maybe. There we go. Red eye. And they have pet eye. So there you go. That's going to be my tool that I've used. Now I'm sure there's many others. And I know that there's a lot of different options if you're on desktop on mobile. This is probably going to be my go-to if I don't want to do it outside of Milio Photos. So there's not really any red eye, so to speak, in here to, to correct, but that is where I would do that. So auto detect, it's going to search for eyes, and then it's going to let you get in there and tap on them to fix those as well. Any other questions? Good. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome, Lynn. Any other thoughts or questions on mobile editing? I'd love to know what mobile editing apps you guys are using too. So I've showed you two of my favorites. These are kind of my go-tos for most things when I'm on the go. Photoshop, Photoshop Express, and Snapseed. And I love Snapseed because it is really a very full-featured editor with a ton of options for both raw editing or editing just your, JP your JPEGs or your iPhone pictures that are on the go. And it's free. Everybody has access to this on iOS or on Android. And there's just a ton of good stuff here. There's even some really cool things under um, grunge that let you add textures. So that's really fun. You can get very creative with some of this stuff. 
And it's all, you know, going to give you the option to, to save this as a copy. It's never going to overwrite your original. So you can get in here and you can have fun and get creative and just, you know, do whatever you like. So Jeremy says lots of inspiration. I'm glad to hear that. Um, Snapseed, like I said, awesome application, highly recommend. Um, if you have any other apps that you guys like to use, please go ahead and put those in the chat or feel free to unmute. But with that, um, unless there's any other questions, I will go ahead and call it a day. It's a pretty short, short session, but lots of information and hopefully makes it easy for you to go through and start editing your pictures, no matter what device you're using. So I want to wish you guys a great day. And sure, we'll see sure, you again. Um, oh, excuse, go ahead. excuse me. Oh, yeah. Kia ora, Angela. Uh, it's Darren here. Uh, Darren from New Zealand. Hey, very, Darren. very early in the morning here. <laughs> but um, thank you for the opportunity. I'm only just um, new to the community and it's uh, amazing. I love the app and I really find it uh, so interesting. You asked what other apps you use. Uh, I've been using Photo Toaster for many years. Um, oh, okay. And what I, it's, a, it's a great little app. It's got some nice little filters. You can also do some mild adjustments. I have got Snapseed and many other apps, but I find Photo Toaster is so good. Um, and oh, I also that. import my images if I'm on the road and I'm I'm out somewhere. I'll import them off the camera and then just modify them slightly, get them so I can push them out and post them uh, quickly. But then when I get home, of course, I process it um, properly uh, on my <laughs> desktop. Yeah, so I just find photo toasters fantastic. But um, thank you for this video. Um, you've shown me some techniques and editing that I. You know, have avoided learning over the years, and um, and it's really, really interesting. Um, yeah, and of course, I, I just love Milo. I just need to get myself a, another PC, I think, to be a host because my laptop, my laptop is getting hammered at the moment. Uh, <laughs> with, with over nearly five hundred thousand and uh, twenty years worth of images to to import. Yeah, that's a substantial library. Well, I'm I'm glad this was helpful to you. And if you have any other questions about editing or techniques to try, please let me know. This is probably in photography, this is my sweet spot, the area that I have the most fun with. It's almost as much fun for me editing as it is being out behind the camera. So um, I, I know how to use many, many different applications and I have most of them. So, but Photo Toaster is a new one to me. So I will have to go look that up. I appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I'm sorry, what is it called, Photo Toaster? Correct, yeah, yes. Photo Toaster, yeah. Okay, okay. All right, and it looks like maybe there was a question in the chat that I missed. Um, is there any way to edit originals? So the what I have done here is when I go from Milio, I have it set to where I am editing a copy of the original. You never wanna actually edit and change your original. That's part of it being non-destructive. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that I have the original downloaded. So you can see I have original TIFF. That's the original format for this particular image. And when you're sending it to an external editor, you're going to go up to the more menu and into settings. And here under export and sharing, this is where I'm selecting that I want to send the unmodified original. So then when I open this image in another editor, whether it's Snapseed, Photoshop Express, Photo Toast, or whatever you're using, it's going to be a copy of that unmodified original. And then it's going to bake those changes into that copy your original stays unmodified and safe, backed up on your vaults. Um, you never really want to touch those or change those because you never know how technology is going to change in the future. You might edit something and you think it looks great now. And then five to 10 years from now, you're going to get a new application for editing and you're going to be like, wow, I can do so much more with this, especially if it has some um, different issues with it. I've noticed that with my older pictures that have a lot of noise or maybe shot on a lower resolution camera. There's so much more I can do with them today. So I encourage you never, ever, ever save over your originals. Keep those preserved. Um, that's just my two cents and my uh, <laughs> my soapbox there for the day. All right. Any other questions that I missed? This is Jonathan. Um, <clears throat> I was the one who posted that question. Mm -hmm. um, basically, you know, sometimes with I, I make thousands and thousands of photos now every month. Mm -hmm. uh, I, some, a lot of them, I don't care if I have the originals quite, you know, I feel like my edited versions are better and I just, I can't have two and three copies of everything. Sure. You know, so much, everything to keep track of. So sometimes I, I do that. 
uh, edit the original a little bit, and that's where I want to keep it. And okay. I want to make my new original. So my kids and things like that, I can see where you get, you know, where you say that. But you know, uh, for a lot of things, though, most of my stuff, I'd I'd like to change it and save it. So. Uh, what I would do at that point is yeah. so like let's say for instance with these two images I have the original here mm -hmm. and then here's my edit if I'm happy with that edit and I just I don't think I'll ever want to re do anything else with this original I could just hit delete and delete it'll it. delete it here from Mylio it'll delete it from all of my Mylio devices right. and that original is gone okay. so now you just have the remaining edit left over okay like on my uh, desktop right now uh, there is an option uh, when I open up one and I right click on it and it says open with, and I use a program called Radiant Photo. Oh yeah. It's a fairly new one that just came out. Yep. I, uh, how do you change that? Uh, if I want to open with something else, I mean, it just has the one option open with Radiant Photo. I don't know how it selected that because I've got probably a dozen editing programs on my computer right now. But it, let me stop sharing it, this and we'll jump over to. Yeah, I use the desktop a lot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm no problem. But, I have but, Radiant as well. It's a great application. So let me go ahead and just pull this over here. Get my mouse back. And let's make this bigger so everybody can see it. Put that out of the way. All right, let's grab a different photo here and let's do this one in Radiant. So if you right click, you can see right now it says for me open with Luminar Neo and that's because that's the most recent application nope. I used. If I want to choose something else, you can go up to the photo menu mm -hmm. and choose open with and then you can choose other applications. And if what you want to use isn't listed here, you can go to other. I got so, you. That helps, that helps a lot. Yeah, and no problem. It up and ask you if you at that point and ask you if you want to edit the original. Well, it's uh, still going to say, so when you are sending an original, it's going to give you a couple of options. So for instance, this is a raw image and it's going to say, edit the original. It's going to actually send, it's going to let Radiant read the original, but when it saves it, because it's a raw file, it's going to save a separate file. So what okay. I can do here, if I go ahead and click continue, that's going to launch it in Radiant Photo and it's going to do its Radiant Magic. Mm-hmm. And then all I need to do is go up here to save. Yeah. And it gives that... you a bunch of options here. So you can, oh. I believe, choose, you might be able to, um, so yeah, here's an option to replace existing. Mm -hmm. I just never do that. And again, if, if you opened a raw and you're saving a JPEG, it's not going to replace it because you're, it doesn't save it as a raw. It saves it as a new type of file. Right. Um, so it just depends on what file types you're working with. Um. So you do have the option here to replace existing if it is the exact same type of file. Um, I choose to typically keep both and I save it as the underscore display. And what that does, that's actually really cool, is it saves it in a way that stacks it with the original. So when I'm when I'm browsing in Mylio, both of those images are on my file system, but I'm only seeing the edited version. So I can go ahead and click save on this. Oh. It's going to save it back to that same folder. So it is going to take up the additional hard drive space, but you're not going to have to look at both versions. So I can go ahead and hit close. And you select all images. And then now this image is, I believe we're seeing the edited version. I can go ahead and open this up, go to my info panel, and here we go. So here was my original RAW, which is the CR3. Mm -hmm. Here's the JPEG that I just edited, and then the XMP, which is our metadata. So these are the three files that are associated with this file type. If I go ahead and right-click on this and say reveal in Finder, what we're going to see here is here's my original raw, the CR3. Here's that display copy that we just created with Mylio. And okay. there's my metadata file. But all we're seeing is the edited version. Oh, that's neat, I guess. Yeah. And if I want to go and delete one of those, the original, I have to go back to the edit or find in Finder. Right. And so if you if you save it with that, um, let me go back here to Finder. If you say it with save it with the underscore display, and then you go mm -hmm. in here and you delete this raw file, right. I would also remove the underscore display from this file name. Oh, and just give it the original. Exactly. Uh, the JPEG. reason for that is Mylio has has a quirk. I'm not going to call it a bug. It's just a quirk because these underscore displays tell Mylio to stack things together. 
If you have an uh, orphan file that has underscore display that's not attached to anything, it's not going to show it. I got you. So it'll, it'll still be in your file system. It's still there. It's not gone. It's just not going to show in my Leo because that underscore display is saying, I'm supposed to be stacked with something, but there's nothing to stack it with. It's not just a naming convention. It's it's a function. Exactly. Okay. I got you. I understand that. Okay. All right. Great and questions. None of, these, none of these are available in the uh, uh, mobile devices yet or this type of stuff? Not exactly. So the way the mobile devices are doing it, let's go here to, uh, da, da, da. let's take a look at this image here. So that was the original raw. You can see I've got my CR3 and my metadata file. If you go over to the one next to it, you can see it's a completely random gen generated file name that it comes back with. Mm -hmm. That is what happens when you use that share sheet and you share it back to Mylia. Now I can click in this and I can change it. You know, if I wanted to do that, I could go to this image, click on this so that I'm copying my file name mm -hmm. and go over to this and I could paste that in there and then add my underscore display. Um, and when Mylio gets a chance to scan everything, it should, and it might require me to restart the application, it should stack those together. Eventually, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So it's it's a little bit of a workaround. It's not as smooth, but at least on mobile, it allows you to get your stuff out to another application and get it back into the software fairly seamlessly. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I typically edit on my Mac anyway, so... I usually do too, but, you know, sometimes it's just fun to sit on the sofa with my iPad or, you know, have options if I'm out and about and I capture something fun with my iPhone. So having options is a wonderful thing. Sure, sure. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> you guys will hopefully up, keep continuing to upgrade your in-house editing tools as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They're actually not that bad, really. No, and there there's more improvements coming. So in the most recent update here in the edit panel, we added this auto color. And we have also a new, um, an improved auto enhance coming soon. We added this option. So here's the auto color here as well. We've have levels so you can adjust the individual levels, which is kind of an advanced thing, but it works really, really well, especially on old scan photos. We added in the vignette tool. So all of this stuff is getting better with every single um, cool. update that we do. And that's all non-damaging, basically, or whatever. You Absolutely. Call it. All of these changes here within Malia Photos, these are saved in that XMP file. So your your original image is untouched. Right, right. And then if you wanted to share this image with you, you know, let's say you've made some changes here in Malia, you want to share this image with someone else. Again, you just go up here to the share button and you, and then when you go to export, you would say a JPEG, and that's going to bake make a copy with those changes baked in. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I've, I'm about uh, just about maybe I'm three weeks into my Leo total myself, and I really love everything about it. So I'm going to continue to come to these classes and hopefully learn everything I know about it someday. Awesome. Well, we, we look forward to having you and we're here if you have any questions. Thank you. You're very welcome. I have a quick question that's not related to um, editing, but sure. I plan on um, scanning all of my old family photos. Okay. Is there is there a particular um, uh, scanner or copier that you would recommend? So it really depends on the types of images that you need to bring in. So if it's just if your pictures are in relatively good shape, meaning they're not torn, they don't have adhesives stuck to them, things like that, the Epson Fast Photo Scanner is my absolute favorite, and it's a sheet feeder, so you can load in up to thirty photos at a time. And it scans them blazingly fast. And it does an automatic color correction. So you can save the original version. You can save a color corrected version and decide which one you like better. Okay. Um, and it's just, it's a fabulous, fabulous scanner. So I can show you a few pictures that I've done with that particular scanner. And that's actually one when I was doing some um, research was one that I, that came up as being. Yeah, amazing. it's wonderful. So actually here's, here's some fast photo images. So. These are ones that I scan. These are me and my grandpa, me and my dad when I was when I was little. And you can see that it also brings in if there's text on the back, mm. it brings in that text as well. So this one here, I can see this was not just February 1979. It was actually my mom wrote on there January 2279. <laughs> so I can get like I can get that extra metadata 
And then I can go ahead and change the date. So it can be, there you go, January 22, 1979. And that way when I, go ahead. um, The two pictures that like with with you and your dad, is that the Epson did the contrast? Yes. So this one here is the original scan. Mm -hmm. And then it also gives you the option to save an optimized version and it does its own color correction. So I didn't do anything here. It just saved two versions of it. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and get rid of the lower quality, or it's not really lower quality. It just has that color cast. Right, right. Or I can use the editing tools here in Mylio, go over to edit that auto color does Mm -hmm. a pretty spectacular job as well. Yeah. Okay, great. And actually it's like, you look back between these two, it's like, which one's better? Uh, Maybe slight leaning towards the one that the Epson did Mm -hmm. a little bit more detail here in the hair and in the shadows, but it's pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. So Great. Fast photo is a wonderful tool Um, for images that have maybe a little bit of damage. You might want to have a flatbed scanner. And I have just an all in one HP machine, household duty one. It's nothing fancy. Um, I scan in documents for like financial stuff every now and again. And um, but if I have an image that has like a torn corner that I don't want to put through the sheet feeder, I can use the flatbed scanner. Um, there's apps out there for your phone. So you can get a actually pretty high quality scan with your phone. If it's something that's oddly shaped or maybe doesn't fit on a scanner. Right. And then if you have a high quality camera, let's say you have a mirrorless or DSLR camera that has a high resolution. If you pop that onto a tripod and point it straight down and then take a picture, that's also a great way to preserve larger pieces. Okay, great. Great, But that fast photo is exceptional. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) Thank you. You're welcome. All right. What's the minimum resolution we should apply when scanning old family photos? That is a great question. So my choice in the software is to set it at at least 600 PPI. Uh, Most scanners default to 300 or lower, um, especially if you're using like an all-in-one machine. Um, those are going to usually default to a lower resolution. So you want to make sure you get into your scanning um, application that comes with your machine and up that resolution to at least 600. That's going to give you a really good quality print or if you want to reprint it or a really good quality image, if you want to make some modifications to it, clean it up and, you know, have something that's worth preserving and archiving. Um, Keep in mind that with a sheet feeder, uh, um, the sheet feeder scanner is going to do that very fast even at 600 PPI, my, my flatbed all-in-one machine, um, if I put it at 600, it's slow. If I put it at 1200, it takes ages to scan in each picture. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, for most people, most archival prints, 600 PPI is going to be more than enough quality for you. So uh, Michael says he likes PhotoMine. Yeah, that's a great app. And also something to kind of just keep in mind, We've, um, we're toying with the idea. We don't have firm plans for it yet, but, you know, PhotoMind has their own built-in scanner app for the phone. You know, if you guys would like to see something similar for that, for Mylio, make sure you go into our um, forum.mylio.com website. There's a feature request section. Pop that in there. Our product team watches that very closely. So if that's something that would be of interest to you and be useful in organizing your photos and especially getting those historical photos added into your collection, Let us know, and we will uh, put some weight on that. All right, any other thoughts or questions? I'm sorry, uh, but I I tried the radiant thing like you just showed me on the screen here, and um, when I hit save, I don't get that nice little pop-up thing. Is that, you know, where I had all the options? I don't get that. It just says processing image. And it has a little countdown thing, you know, and then it goes away. But I don't see the changes in my Leo either. Hmm. So I, I just, I don't. I, and I you like hit that. the orange save button up here in the upper yeah. right corner. Uh-huh. Hmm. And yeah. I. See here. I don't even see any preferences in this program. I don't either. That's what I was looking for. I was like, is there a preference? That might be something to reach out to the Radiant support team and get some okay. help with. But that um, box that popped up, of people. that was Radiance box, not y'all's box. Correct. Because it's trying to, I mean, it should send it back somehow. But. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, it. 
Yeah, yeah, I can right click on Mylio and it opens it up in Radiant just fine. And it does a little thing, like I said, and uh, I can make changes and then I hit save and it just says processing images and it, and it, that's it. Interesting. So, yeah, I would reach out to, okay, reach out to Radiant support and see what they say. If they bounce it back to us, let me know. Um, we do have a great relationship with them so we can, we can work and figure out what's going on there. It's like a save as box, right? Or it's just yeah, save. it's it's just a save, you know, save button save here in the upper right box. corner. That's what I use, and that's yeah, yeah, that's I'm doing that. Interesting. And then it and it says you can click done and leave the image open, or you can click close and it'll close, you know, close the whole program out and go back to Mylio, which is what I prefer. But interesting. You know, There's got to be a preference somewhere. There has yeah. to be. <laughs> Right, and well, it's probably it's simple, but I'm not entirely sure where to send you for that one. So yeah, yeah I would reach out to Radiant Support. I'll, I'll do that, and I'll Google search it and everything else. So. Sounds I'm good. This stuff. So thank you, and I look forward to your next meeting. You're very welcome. All right, any other questions before we sign off for today? Going once, going twice. I do have a real quick one. Sure. I'm really new, new uh, to Mylio. Um, I'm trying to sort through all my pictures and just delete everything from my phone that's, you know, on my phone that's just junk. Yeah. Um, is there a way to sort the photos like to documents and then delete those? Sure. So if you go to, let's say all photos uh -huh. and you go to search, um, what I would do is go to the help menu first and to the how-to guide, that's going to launch the manual. Okay. And if you scroll down towards the bottom, there is a, uh, an entire chapter on finding your photos and videos. This is using search. Down here under advanced search expressions, and this I know gets a little technical looking. It can look a little scary. I promise it's not that bad. Um, there's different searches you can do to find different things. So you can find different, um, if you're looking for, say, PNG files. Oh, yeah. No, I need so that would be the extension, and you'd enter in the file extension. So where it says like ext nef that's a um, nikon raw file but let's say we want to find oh, yes. png files so i'm going to hit png no i need it. i've got no power and no, let me go ahead and that right there so again i just searched for ext png and that's going to bring up all of the png files in my library so okay. i can go through here and pngs are a typical file format for screenshots so if oh. you've done a lot of screenshots, this allows you to go through and maybe clean up some of those. Okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. But yeah, take a look at the manual and that help section here. Like there's a bunch of different searches you can do. And all you need to do is just copy and paste. So it gives you an idea and then you can adjust it based on a lot of different parameters. But you know, dig in here and, and see. And we are working on making the search field a lot more user-friendly. Um, right now, it's extremely powerful, but it is a bit intimidating. Um, so there are changes coming to make this friendlier. Okay, thanks. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed learning some editing techniques. Um, if you have questions, again, feel free to reach out to me in the community. I'm always there to help you guys out. I want to wish you guys a great rest of your week and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye everyone.